If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and try to answer this question on your own first before listening on. We're going to go ahead and draw a picture that represents the information that's described in the question. And so in the center of the picture, we have the bird that's standing on this wire. And because of the weight of the bird, the wire is going to sort of bend downward. And we were given some distances in the question, and we want to label those distances next. So we note that the distance from one pole to the other is 50 meters. But since the bird is standing midway between the poles, that means that the distance from here over to one of the poles is going to be 25 meters. And then over on the other side, the same thing. So the distance between the pole and the center here is again going to be 25 meters. We were also told that the wire sags by 0.2 meters. So that means from here to here is going to be 0.2 meters. And now we were asked to draw a free body diagram of the bird, which will be showing the forces that are acting on the bird. Now, one force that's acting on the bird is its weight or sometimes called the gravitational force. And that has a value equal to the mass of the bird times the gravitational constant, which is 9.8. But there's also some wires that are acting on the bird and preventing it from falling down. There's a wire that's pulling the bird up and to the right. And usually we call a force that's pulling on an object a tension force. And that would be present if you have a wire or a rope or a string or some similar object. On the other side, we also have the wire pulling up and to the left on the bird. And that's also going to be a tension force. So we can label that T. And you'll notice we're not calling the tension forces T1 and T2, because if we did that, that would mean that the tensions were different. But because of the symmetry of this scenario, the tension in the left side of the wire is going to equal the tension in the right side of the wire. So we're just going to label them T. And in fact, the question is asking us to figure out how much tension the bird produces in the wire. So we're asked to calculate the value of T. Now, after drawing a free body diagram, what we typically want to do is arrange the forces into a table. And the table is going to show us how to break those forces into their X and Y components. So for example, we have three forces. We have the gravitational force, we have the force that we marked T, and then we have the other force that we marked T. And we're going to break them into their X and their Y components. Now, the gravitational force is pointing exclusively in the downward or Y direction, which means that its X component will actually be zero. And because it's pointing downward, we're actually going to call it negative mg. We have the tension force on the right side, and we need to break that into its X and Y components. But before we can do that, we need to actually find this angle right here. And you can either find that angle, or it turns out you could find this angle as well, and the problem would work. But we will just arbitrarily select this angle, and we'll call it alpha. Now, we can see that the tangent of that angle alpha would equal the opposite side, which is 0.2 divided by the adjacent side, which is 25. Now, you'll notice we're allowed to use the tangent because we actually do, in fact, have a right triangle. We could even color in that right triangle so that we can see, or, see it more clearly. So right here is the right triangle that we are examining, and we're using the tangent function to figure out this angle alpha. Now, to actually solve for alpha, you'd have to take the inverse tangent of this ratio. So you'd pick up your calculator, and you'd determine the inverse tangent of 0.2 over 25 and make sure your calculator is in degree mode. And when you do that, you get a very tiny angle of 0.458 degrees. So that's going to be this angle that we had marked alpha. And we're going to see that that's useful for us in determining the x and y components of the tension force. So let's go ahead and draw in the two components for this force that's marked t on the right side of the diagram. We're going to have a component that points straight up. And then we're going to have a component that points straight across. And this component that points straight up, you'll notice is located opposite to the angle that we had marked theta. And since it's located opposite, we're going to be using the sine function. So that means that this component right here, which is pointing in the positive y direction, can be represented by t times the sine of alpha. This component, which is pointing in the positive x direction, is located adjacent to the angle marked alpha, so that's going to be t times the cosine of alpha. 
And notice that both these components are positive because this component right here is pointing upward in the positive y direction. So we would have positive t sine of alpha. And then this component here is pointing in the positive x direction. So we would have t cosine of alpha and it would be positive. Now a similar argument will be made to find the components of this tension force. We're gonna have an upward acting component and then a leftward acting component. The upward component will again be t sine of alpha and the leftward component, because it's adjacent to the angle of marked alpha, will be negative t cosine alpha. Notice it's negative because it's pointing to the left. Now that we have all of the forces broken into their xy components, what we can do is find the sum of the forces. And we'll begin by summing the three forces in the y direction. So we would have negative mg plus t sine alpha plus another t sine of alpha and then after summing those forces, what we do is we set that equal to the mass times the acceleration. Now, the acceleration of the bird is actually zero because it's just standing there on the wire. So if we plug zero in for the acceleration and multiply it by the mass, we're going to end up with a zero on the right-hand side. Now, we can combine the like terms of t sine alpha, t sine alpha to make 2 t sine alpha. We could then add mg to both sides of the equation so that it will cancel out on the left hand side. So if we come up here we can see that 2t times the sine of alpha is going to equal mg. And finally to solve for the tension t we can divide both sides of this equation by 2 sine of alpha. And by doing that the 2's will cancel out here and so will the sine alphas. So we're left with the tension, we'll come over here, the tension is equal to mg divided by 2 times the sine of alpha. So all we have to do is plug in the known values. The mass was given to us as 1 kilogram, g is 9.8, and then alpha we noted was 0.458 degrees. So you can pick up your calculator and type this in, and when you do that you get a value for the tension of approximately 613 newtons, and this is indeed the correct answer to the